Hello everyone, Keyboard Alchemist here and welcome back to another Stable Diffusion tutorial. Today we're going to talk about owl painting. Let's take a look at this portrait of a beautiful young woman that we have generated previously. While this portrait looks nice, wouldn't it be even better if we can visualize more of the picture? In other words, extending an image beyond its borders. This is known as owl painting. I bet you probably have a mental image of what this portrait might look like beyond the borders, and Stable Diffusion is the perfect tool to help you bring that mental image to life. There are many different methods for owl painting. In this video, we are going to walk through how to do owl painting with the help of ControlNet. Along the way, I will provide tips and tricks to save you time and effort. I will show you how to expand a 512 by 768 portrait into a 2048 by 2048 image, and how to break the limits of the max width and height constraint to expand your image even more. Without further ado, let's get into it. First, you will need to have the ControlNet extension installed and the ControlNet in-painting model downloaded. If you don't already know how to do this, go ahead and take a look at my previous video where I have described the installation process in detail. I will have a card in the upper right-hand corner and a link in the descriptions. Let's load the portrait image into PNG info and send it to image to image. This will make sure all of your prompts and negative prompts are carried over and all of your settings too. We previously used the Magic Mix version 5 model to generate this image so I will still use this model now. I think this image that I have loaded was the result of an in-painted image, so the positive prompt is not complete. I will copy over a complete positive prompt from a previous image. The positive prompt was pretty simple in this case. Best quality, masterpiece, ultra high res, photorealistic, one girl, off shoulder, smile. Here are the important settings. Make sure your resize mode is set to resize and fill. Resize and fill will expand your image to the specified size. Then fill in some pixels based on the existing pixels at the edge of your original image. This is going to help us with generating new stuff in our resulting image. Go ahead and select the sampling method as you like. In this case, I selected the DPM++ 2M Keras and select a value of the sampling steps that will provide you with good results. In this case, I know 50 steps is more than enough. Another important parameter in this process is the width and height. In this case, we will expand the image in the vertical dimension first. I found that you tend to get better results if you increase the size a few hundred pixels at a time. Here's a comparison between increasing from 768 to 1024, which is a 1.33x increase, versus 768 to 1536, which is a 2x increase. Most of the time, increasing the height too much initially will result in some artifacts. As we can see, in some of these images, we are getting another face in the image. This is because the AI is trying to fill the extra space with something new. But if you give it too much space initially, it will try to be creative and fill that space without the proper context, thus creating these types of artifacts. I even tried to get rid of my prompts, and that did not help with the artifact. Initially, I increased the image height from 768 to 1280, then from 1280 to 1920. In most cases, this would have worked pretty well. However, in this particular case, I saw that most of the images that I generated had a very elongated forearm, not to mention background that I didn't really like and some additional artifacts in the outpainted area. This was due to the somewhat unique composition of this image. In the original image, only the upper arms were visible, so when I increased the image height to 1280, the AI extended the image and therefore the arms along with it. But the outpainted image only showed a part of the forearms. The hands were not in the image at that point. Then, 
when trying to extend the image again from 1280 to 1920, the AI was trying to extend the arms again before starting to draw the hands. This process essentially elongated the forearms twice, thus resulting in a disproportionately long forearm. After playing around with some different initial length increases, I realized I can only remedy this situation by increasing the height of the original image by an amount greater than 1280 during the initial increase. This would allow the hands, or at least a part of the hands, to show up in the initial outpainted image. This way, the AI will have proper contact to draw the hands without lengthening the arms. And if I do get artifacts, then I would just have to deal with them by inpainting them out of the picture later. I ended up increasing the height from 768 directly to 1600. I also adjusted my positive prompt quite a bit so that I will get the clothing and background that I wanted. So the moral of the story is, you may have to adapt to your particular situation and figure out how much of a height increase that you will initially use to give you the best results. Okay, now back to what we were doing before I got sidetracked explaining why I chose to increase the height to 1600. We want to generate more than one outpainted image and then pick the best one. But I recommend increasing the batch count and not the batch size. Here is an example to illustrate my point. When I was trying to generate a slightly larger image that was 1024 by 2048 pixels, I can set batch count to 1 and batch size to 4, or I can set batch count to 4 and batch size to 1. Both methods will give me four resulting images, but the first method that generated all four images in one batch took more than one hour and the second method, which generated four batches of one image each, only took eight minutes. Now, why did this happen, you might ask? This is because when generating four images in a single batch, it takes more VRAM for Automatic 11.11 to do this. If I had more VRAM instead of only 8 GBs, this probably won't be a problem. But since I only have limited VRAM, Trying to generate more images in one single batch is going to max out my VRAM usage. And when your VRAM is maxed out, the program will try to offload some of the data to your RAM and transfer data back and forth between your VRAM and RAM. While this process will allow you to successfully generate images without getting an error, it will slow the image generation way down. On the other hand, if you're just generating one image at a time, i.e. batch size of 1, you are not going to max out your VRAM usage and thus not running into this memory management issue. So always increase your batch count and not the batch size. If you have a relatively small graphics card like me, this tip will save you a lot of time. If you have a high-end graphics card with lots of VRAM, then you will probably want to test out what your upper limit is for batch size. As for the other settings, I'm going to leave CFG scale at 7.5 and set denoising strength at 0.75. You can experiment with these values and see what works well for the image that you're working on. Set your seed to random, minus 1, or use the existing seed. It doesn't matter too much. We are going to use ControlNet inpainting model to perform the outpainting. This is a very efficient method that will give you consistent results without too much manual manipulation of the original image. Click the Enable button and the Upload Independent Control Image button. Then drag your original image into the box. Your original image is going to serve as the reference image to provide the AI with the right context to generate new content. Select the InPaint radio button, then under Preprocessor, select InPaint only plus Llama, and leave the model dropdown unchanged. You can leave control weight, starting control step, and the ending control step at the default values. The ending control step tells ControlNet when to stop processing the image. A value of 1 means ControlNet will be activated for 100% of the steps. 
In my case, this will be 50 steps. But if I decrease this number to say 0.5, which means control net will be active for only 50% of the total number of steps, then control net will stop at 25 steps. I tested the effects of this value on the image by using the same starting seed and all the same parameters, only changing the ending control step from 0.2 to 1 in 0.2 increments. As we can clearly see, the lower values of 0.2 and 0.4 are not good. We can see the seams between the original image and the expanded regions. There are also some easily noticeable artifacts in the newly expanded areas. But as we increase the end control step value, the seams become less and less noticeable and artifacts are being reduced. At the higher end, there are almost no difference between the 0.8 and 1.0 images. I think there are no tangible benefits of decreasing this value, so we should just keep it at the default value of 1. I have seen other people suggest using a value of 0.5 for this. I'm not sure why one would want to do that, but if you know of any reason to decrease this value, please let me know in the comments. I left the control mode in the balance mode and made the resize mode resize and fill. Then click generate or control plus enter to start your generation. Now that I have a 512 by 1600 image that I liked, I loaded this new image into the image to image section and the control net section. Then increase the height to 1920. All other parameters remain the same and I generated a new batch. Okay, in this new batch of 1512 by 1920 images, I'm mainly looking for the ones with good hands. It looks like these four images are not ideal, so let's generate again. Alright, I am now done with expanding the image in the vertical direction. I will outpaint the image in the horizontal direction by changing the width. The procedure is exactly the same as what we have done for the height. Again, you may want to change your positive prompt here to make sure you will get the background that you want. For example, I have changed the positive prompts to emphasize blue sky and white sandy beach. The other thing that I have done is to change the model because I found that the original model that I was using did not generate the type of background that I wanted. So I experimented with a few different models and landed on Photon version 1. I will go ahead and skip the video footage of the image generation process here since the image was getting larger and generation times were getting significantly longer so I will just skip to the end result. I increase the width incrementally, first to 1024, then to 1440, and finally to 2048. I could have stopped there, but I wanted to go for the limit break. I wanted to convert our original small portrait image into a landscape image with a 4x3 width to height ratio. My image height was at 1920 already, so I would need to outpaint the width to 2560 pixels. But currently our width is maxed out at 2048, so how do we extend the width to 2560? Before we go on to explain the super secret ultimate limit break no jutsu, please take a second to click the like and subscribe buttons and help support this channel. 
Your likes and subscriptions help me grow this channel and allow me to continue making quality content. Thank you. Okay, I was just kidding about the super secret part of this trick. It's actually very simple to do if you know where to look. Go to your main Stable Diffusion installation folder, find the ui-config.json file, open it with Notepad++. Scroll down to find image to image slash width slash maximum. The default value is 2048. We will change this value to 4096. You can really change this into any other value, but I think 4096 will suffice for our purposes. Then do the same with image to image slash height slash maximum and save your changes. Now rerun your web UI user .bat file. Coming back to the web UI, we can now increase the width and height beyond 2048. However, I can't adjust the slider to do this. We will need to type the value directly into the field. Note, if you enter a value that is above the new 4096 maximum, it will default back to the max value. Now we can get back to outpainting our image to 2560 by 1920. I will set all the parameters to the same values as before. But I have deleted all of my positive prompts, changed the CFG scale to 6.5 so that the AI will have some more freedom to fill in the outpainted areas. Don't forget to load your image into ControlNet and set the same parameters as before. Then click Generate. Due to the large image size, this generation is going to take quite some time, so I will skip to the end. General tip, in the example shown in this video, I am extending the height of the image first. It makes sense for this particular image because I can work on the main character first and then work on expanding the background. However, this does not mean that you cannot extend the image in the horizontal direction first. Note, don't try to change both width and height at the same time. That will not help you achieve outpainting. It will only resize the image. You should always outpaint in one direction first, then the other. Now that I'm completely done with outpainting, I will do some inpainting to fix certain aspects of the image, such as the woman's dress, the floating trees, and the rock on the right-hand side. I won't bore you with the details of how I did the inpainting, but if you need some help on inpainting, go ahead and check out my previous video on inpainting techniques. I'll leave a card in the top right-hand corner. Let's jump ahead to the result of the inpainting. I have changed the way the dress looked, removed the floating trees, and removed the rocks. The last step I wanted to do is an image-to-image -image latent upscale. I was trying to increase the image to 3072 by 2304, but it proved to be too much for my measly 8GB graphics card to handle. Just when I thought it was going to be completed successfully, I got the dreaded CUDA out of memory error. Here's how I dealt with the problem. I added dash dash med VRAM to my command line arguments. Even though this slowed down my image generation speed, it ensured that I did not get the out of memory error. Here's the final result after tweaking the denoising strength to 0.45 and completing the latent upscaling to 3072 by 2304. Oh, and I'm sure you have noticed that I have in-painted in the right arm and hand. I just thought it looked more natural with both arms showing. I had a lot of fun out painting the image this way, and I hope you did as well by following along with the process. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I would appreciate it if you show your support by clicking on the like button and subscribe to this channel. It will help me a lot. Thank you. And I will see you in the next video.